Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming Jay, and today we're hopping into a Sega Arcade Classic. Only this is not in the arcade, this is on the Sega 32X, which, of course, we all know unlo unlocked the power of the Sega Genesis to make it 32 times as powerful, um, if only that were the case, right? I mean, it, it was a significant upgrade chip, but uh, not 32 times as powerful. Anyway, this is one of the earlier 3D racing games ever made. Not the absolute first, but one of the earlier ones. It uh, introduced sort of polygon graphics at a time when polygons were not seen very often. So it's considered pretty damn impressive. And look, VR! We're getting a seizure of virtual reality. Racing. Virtual racing, the deluxe set. Let's go ahead and hop in here. Um, I think I pressed start. I think the game's just thinking. There we go. Check out this badass menu here. We can uh, do a time attack, or let's just go ahead and virtual race. I always wanted to say virtual racing as a kid. Like, I wanted to call it virtual fighter, but it was virtua. So it's not, let's go ahead and do this virtually. It's virtua -y, if you were to say it like that. Okay, we got to do the formula racing, because that's what this is all about. we got a bunch of different levels here. We'll give them all a shot, and then I thought as a treat, we would pop into the arcade version just so we could quickly see the differences. Um, because the arcades, uh, you know, arcade games are always just more advanced than the home console versions. Back in the day, they were at least. Uh, these days, um, it might not always be the case. But anyway, we're going for Big Forest in Virtual Land. Um, now, <laughs> we have our little blockhead uh, uh, pit team here. They look like they could be from a children's cartoon or something. Now we can change the views of our Virtua Racer dude. We can go really... Oh my god, this is like a bird's eye view. Holy crap, look at that. How could you race this way? This feels like cheating because you can see so far uh, ahead of what's happening. Or you can go like right down below to the ground. Oh, and flip over on the bridge. We got flames coming out... Flames coming out of the back of our car. Is that regulation? I don't know a ton about uh, Formula racing cars, but it feels like flames do not regularly come out of their rear. Um, this car has sick grip on the road, but I guess if you never brake, you're going to slide into the wall like I just did there. But, okay, so this game feels, it feels very sticky on the road, which is kind of a good thing because it makes racing easier. But I will say that I think the main draw of this game is not necessarily the amazing racing physics. Um, I think it's the fact that you can do this, not this. Oh, we're in the car. I wanted to zoom out really far back when I said do this. I guess this is why you'd play it too. So this game, it's hard to understand how important this game was these days. Because you look at it now and you're like, yeah, the graphics aren't anything that special. The racing controls are fine. The physics are kind of okay. But, you know, nothing that future games decided to base their gameplay on. So it's all just sort of fine by today's standards. But back in the day... You know, when we didn't have 3D consoles back at home, people had barely... There were people who had never seen a polygon. There were people living around the world who had never seen a polygon. Try and find someone these days who's never seen a polygon. Everyone's seen a polygon. Come on. Um, and so this was part of the whole, like, VR craze of... I, I, I don't know. I, you know what? Maybe it's not a craze, but it was definitely a fascination in the 80s. There is like, you know, we thought VR would be the next big thing and 3D games and stuff started to happen and we saw polygons and you could simulate things in the 3D. I mean, go back and watch any 80s movie where like technology is a thing and they always have some advanced computer or some government agency and they're printing stuff off and like laughably bad 3D by today's standards. But back in the day, people were like blown away by the idea of VR. Everything's going to be VR in the future. VR, we'll, we'll live in computers, you know, and he had... Uh, like eras of really bad CG graphics because everyone was just like, whoa, a computer made that. It's so cool. You know, VR technology is pretty interesting because it kind of stalled out at one point. It's like it was going to be really big and huge. And all of a sudden, kind of like in the 90s and early 2000s, everyone kind of just kind of lost interest. They're like, ah, VR is not really ever going to happen. You know, The Matrix was pretty cool. But in that, in that movie, computers built VR and they did a hell of a better job than we ever could. So people didn't even really... You know, people weren't too jazzed about VR at a certain point. That all kind of changed in recent years. I mean, the Oculus Rift has really brought everything back. And then now, like, companies like Valve and Vive and HTC and stuff are producing 3D stuff. I think we just stalled out here. We ran out of gas. Ran out of time. There's an amusement park over there. That's nice. It looks like it was made through, like, next blocks or something. But uh, I guess we didn't place. Uh, not too surprising. But, hey, I'm not here to place. Wait. 
Wait, wait, wait. There's something wrong with this high scoreboard. How did I get second? Wait. I'm so confused. I had a better time than the third place guy, but I had a better time than the first place guy. But if you look at the first and third, you would think, oh. Oh, no, wait, this is my lap. Oh, I thought this was a high scoreboard. And I was like, how does this make sense? How do the scores rank 50, 46, 47 in terms of order? This is my laps. I get it. I'm just me not so smart sometimes. And uh, I didn't understand. I was looking at a high scoreboard. So here we got, uh, this looks like a San Francisco track. Now, Virtua Fighter, I was already commenting on how the name Virtua is kind of funky. Uh, we're going to race through. Let's try and, like, wipe out guys as we go. Oh, they wiped me out. Whoa, did you see that recovery? See, like, unrealistic physics here. <laughs> Again, not why people play it. I mean, people play this because it was an experience. You would sit down in an arcade machine, enter the virtual land of Virtual Racer, um, up there with Virtual Fighter. I guess Sega wanted to make Virtua like a new franchise. And, uh, I mean, there's Virtua Cop, but what other Virtua games are there? I think there's one or two more games. But it kind of seems like the land of Virtua here is pretty sparse pickings. Your employment options are racing a car, being a cop, or getting in random fights. And when your economy is built on racing, policing, and brawling, um, you don't have a sustainable economy. I'm just going to say it. I, I feel like things are not going to go well in your land. I don't care if it's a real land or a virtual one. This Virtua place that you've invented here does not have a sustainable economic system. People are not going to be happy. Uh, <laughs> but this this game was about the experience, man. To a degree, I kind of feel like racing games in the arcade are still almost about the experience. Maybe that's why they've lived, like, they've hung around so long. Because, like, most video games, like, when you sit down and play them, you put a controller in your hand, you play a video game. And it's kind of up to your imagination to feel immersed. And when you play a racing game at home, same deal. Video game goes in the machine, controller goes in your hands. Yeah, you kind of feel immersed if you feel immersed. Uh, you could get crazy and get a racing wheel if you wanted. Uh, like somebody who might spend too much money on gaming peripherals and devices and random games. I won't say who that person is, but, uh, I, I mean, he has spent a lot of money on these things. Anyway... But in arcades, racers, I feel like even a racer like this, playing it in an arcade, would give you a fundamentally different feel. Because you're sitting in a racing car seat. You have like a, a shifter beside you. There's gas pedals, steering wheel. There's like sometimes plastic rear view mirrors and stuff. Like you're kind of in a cockpit of a car almost. And yes, I know cars don't actually have cockpits. I'm just trying to, uh, you know, describe how immersive it actually feels. So I think... Um, racers an arcade racer really feels fundamentally different than playing a game at home and think about it there are many there are too many other arcade genres or genres of game where they really try to immerse you with the arcade cabinet it's not like every every first person shooter you play in an arcade or i guess they don't have first person shooters but like rail shooters where you have those uh, shooter guns or whatever i mean yeah you have the gun and you have like a holster on the machine but it's not like they immerse you in, like, a, a room and you put on, like, a detective's jacket and stuff to really feel like you're in the game. No, it's just, you know, you're holding the gun. It's kind of cool. You're aiming at the screen. Um, but then, you know, other games like, you know, Donkey Kong or something, they don't do anything to immerse you in Donkey Kong. You don't feel like you're actually in a construction site. But racing, arcade racers really do immerse you. Um, which I think, again, is part of their longevity. It's part of the reason why they've hung around so long. Because they really feel like a different experience. Man, we cannot get past this third lap. It's like we have uh, some kind of mental block about it. Our guy's afraid of failure. So, okay, we went through Big Forest. Very simple, nice open track. We went through Bay Bridge. It was fine. Um, you know, had a few twisty turns. Let's go to the Acropolis, which I think the Acropolis, isn't that uh, the area in Greece? where all the ruins are of, like, their ancient government or something like that? If I'm not mistaken, if my um, humanities education from years ago, in fact, I didn't have a humanities major, but the few humanities courses I ever took, like in high school and stuff, if I'm remembering them correctly, let's race like this. I feel like we're racing ants. It's like a bunch of ants decided to get together and race. I also feel like I can do a lot better like this. Oh, pfft, as I completely wipe out. I was going to say, I feel like I can do a lot better because I can see exactly what's coming up. Um, imagine this is how people race in the future. They just race from hot air balloons, and their cars are just like little... This is like racing a remote control car, almost. 
Uh, and I'm like running behind it. Imagine I'm just like a giant running behind a little remote control car. That's essentially what drones are. Drones are just like modern remote control cars, only they can also fly. Which, if you had told six-year-old me when I was a child that will one day be a thing that you could potentially buy, um, I would have just gone ballistic. I wouldn't have believed you, and then I would have saved all my money to buy one of those things when I was older. Anyway, I don't know why we're talking about buying drones. We're playing a racing car. Let's get back into the action. Uh, I was getting, I was zoning out to, by being too far away from my car there, I gotta be right near the action. In fact, let's get, let's get in this beast. Let's race like this. Oh, God. <laughs> so, one thing about the primitive graphics is it's hard to tell where the road is and what a wall is, because it's all just sort of blurry, low-level gray here. So, this is, this is by far the hardest way to race. I can't even tell when a turn is coming up. Dear God. <laughs> Again. You gotta give this game a little bit of a break in terms of its graphics because it was so, you know, revolutionary at the time. Oh, I didn't realize that was a turn. Um, this is a bad way to race. I feel like this is a better way. We have we have a shot, we're not so far away that I'm just gonna lose interest and feel like I'm racing ants. Also, we have totally lost the other racers. If we didn't have a time limit, I would turn around and try and drive reverse on the track and screw some people up. But, like all arcade racers, they're really emphasizing this time mechanic that keep you going. Which is kind of annoying to me. I just want to have fun. I want to race around my race car and have a lot of fun. We should totally switch to the stock car after this. We've seen the, the Formula racing car do its thing. I want to see how the stock car behaves. And I guess there is... There's a pit stop in this game. I imagine you can, like, slide in and have pit work done. But, like, honestly... We have like 13 seconds to get to the next, next checkpoint. Who Who is so good at this game that they have time to like slide in and have pit stops? Um, I'm just literally trying to get to the fourth lap. I've never seen the fourth lap. I don't know if it exists. I've heard tale. I don't believe it. It's uh, it's like a, a mystical unicorn to me. I don't know if the, the fourth lap is even a thing. I don't believe any racer who said he's made it there because it seems impossible. My guy only believes in putting enough gas into his car to really make it around those first three laps. Because in his mind, more gas means slower car. Like, we only got two two laps in there because there's a longer track. He didn't have enough gas. But in his mind, more gas means slower car because he's carrying all that weight. So he's like, well, clearly we need less gas. And people try to tell him. They're like, but Mick, Mick, you're not even making it to round four, buddy. And he's like, look, there's, look, we can, we can wax intellectual about this. But the simple fact is, you pull more gas in that tank, I'm going to be coming in dead last. I'm going to come in dead last no matter how many laps there are. And so, you know, he doesn't. He never makes it to the fourth lap. I mean, there's no reasoning with this guy sometimes. Um, oops. <laughs> oh, good. I was like, I wanted to switch tracks and accidentally pressed a button without looking, and it turned out to be the right button. Isn't it nice when that happens? Ooh, we got a prototype car. This looks like a Hot Wheels car. Let's go ahead and go into the stock car. So we'll do Star Car and Highland, then we'll try Prototype on Sand Park, and then we'll hop over to the arcade and see what things are looking like over there. So the Highland. Now I feel like I'm in Scotland. It's a Scottish race. And, uh, oh, look at all the 3D buildings and stuff. Um, whoa, whoa, okay, we need a high view for this, because I can't tell what the hell is road, what the hell isn't. So much easier to race this way, because you can actually see... Whoa, I'm sliding all over the racetrack there, I'm like drifting. Oh my god. Okay, I was holding it together briefly. Oh man. You know what would help if I knew what br what button was brake? I know how to switch my camera and accelerate. Those are those are not the two car buttons. Oh look, we're actually in the car. Sweet. If you were a racer and there were <laughs> there was a way to switch your camera view, you would not want to go into a race knowing only how to switch your camera view and how to accelerate. You definitely want to have some idea of where that brake button is. So, I think it's a, which is a little awkward for me, but oh god. Okay. I, I find holding Sega Genesis controller slightly awkward because... So I've got my finger on B, and now I want to, like, my thumb, and now I want to slide over and hit A. So I'm pressing it with, like, the left tip, left sliver of my thumb, and it's not always working. Um, and it's just a little awkward for me. I don't know, I guess... I truly am a product of Nintendo. They have literally warped my hand into a hand that is accepting only of Nintendo controllers, at least of the retro generation. I guess of the modern games. Oh, we can't even see where we are there. Good thing that's just a straight tunnel. That's pretty hilarious. Um, of the modern games, I guess I am a product of... 
uh, probably PlayStation these case, days. It used to be Xbox, but kind of funny how the horizon on our left or right, it doesn't exist very far. It's like our field of view is only like a couple of feet. So it's like the background there, the like roaming green hills. Um, you'll see it better when we get away from these buildings. But those roaming green hills, it kind of looks like the whole, I'm racing in like a sky island. It's just kind of floating above everything. So hold on, once we get past this building. I gotta say, I'm impressed by the polygon buildings. I don't know why. Once we get over this hill. Hey, look on the right there. There's like a, a cliff, basically. The trees only go so far, and then it's just like a cliff. Oh, and now water has appeared. You see how all the textures are popping in? Classic old school graphics. Let's go down closer to the car here. Whoa. I wonder if good old Mick here is going to make it to round number four. Depends how much gas you put in the car, I suppose. Now, I'm playing this on the 32X, which was a not very successful Sega Genesis peripheral. Um, it's pretty funny, actually. Sega Genesis, not oh, game over, by the way. Sega Genesis goes ahead and makes the 32X to like power up their Sega Genesis, and it doesn't sell all that well. Meanwhile, like on the Super Nintendo, you have like the Super Game Boy, which kind of downgraded the Super Nintendo. I mean, it made it possible to play Game Boy games, which is an upgrade, but Game Boy games are obviously inferior to Super Nintendo games technology-wise, so it kind of like made the Super Nintendo play worse games, quote unquote, but that was a wild, well, not a wild success, but it was a successful peripheral. Um, and it goes to show you, it's all about games. I mean, the reason the 32X didn't do so great is there just weren't enough developers um, producing games for it. Um, and I think it's a combination of things. You can go read about it. But, like, you know, developers were worried 32X wouldn't be around very long, so they want to put a lot of effort into developing games for this peripheral. But, you know, it's a story as old as time, guys. The best way to tell if a console is going to make it or not is does it have a ton of games? If the answer is no, then that thing's just not going to... You know, we saw it, like, with the Wii U. Uh, we saw it with the, the... What were other peripherals? Oh, like the, the Virtual Boy... That one did not, speaking of virtual reality, that's one virtual reality technology that also failed hardcore, but there just really were like barely any games for it. Plus it also gave people headaches and made them sick and stuff. But anyway, this car is fast as beans, Jesus. It's like, this is a prototype car. This is a prototype for like the future of cars. They're called Blars and they are look just like cars, but they go really fast. They're a blur when they fly by you. That's why they're called Blars. But this is definitely a prototype for the future. I can't even get it up to max speed because I slam into a wall once I do. And I go back down 300 miles, 347 miles per hour. Jesus. I can't even fathom what that would be like. Like if I got on the road, on a highway, and slowly accelerate up to 300 and 47 miles per hour. I feel like my car would disintegrate into bits in front of me. Like, I don't think, like, the chassis would hold up under those speeds. That's, like, literally breakneck speeds. And we're actually, we're, we're 13th. Oh, my God, we're placing. We're placing in an actual race. I think we not only have not finished any race yet, we definitely have not placed. Oh, Jesus, hopefully uh, hopefully the, the lab boys put in a uh, little backup uh, armor onto this thing because I'm just slamming it into walls at full speedsies. 340 miles per hour into a wall. If anything survives at that speed, that is a car that you not only develop, that is, that's ready for manufacture. There's no more prototyping needed. If a car can slam into a wall at 347, you can walk away from that and continue racing not only did everyone survive, but the guy was like, no, I'm going to keep going. I I'm going to keep going. Let's go see what's going on over here. I have a feeling good things are going to await us over here. Oh, but <laughs> good things is in a, a very narrow and precarious road. Yowza. I guess that's a shortcut of sorts. It's a shortcut that physically is a shorter distance, but temporarily. It took me much longer to navigate that, mostly due to my own incompetence, but still. My own lack of uh, racing acumen, racing building. I'm, I'm a man of complex words today, it seems. Just throwing out those uh, $10 words. Okay, here we go. So we need, we need like a comeback plan here. Oh, God. <laughs> that is not part of the comeback plan. That wall gets me every time. It's like, it's like the wall. <laughs> it's 
It's like the wall is capable of tricking me. I'm like, oh, every time. How do you get me? You, you fool me every time, wall. You fool me. Just when I think I'm not going to hit you, not going to be there. Boom, you're there. It's the saddest thing ever when you fall victim to a wall. It's like losing a fight with a chair. It's like, if that ever happened to you, there's it's just shame on all sides. Okay, we, we didn't. We didn't raid. We didn't win a race. We came in 16. 16 of 16. And we've, we've progressively got worse. We went from completing three laps, and now we're just consistently completing one. Well, <clears throat> let's just uh, fastest lap. Is, that could be my lap, for all I know. But uh, I have a feeling it's not. Uh, definitely don't want to go to manual transmission. That's the thing. Time attack. Two players would be kind of cool. What's under option? Let's just double check. Uh, oh, wait. There's an easy? Damn you. Well, little boys play on easy. Men play on normal. Or sometimes we play on easy when we realize that there is actually an option for it before we start playing. But it's too late now because we already did it. All right, we've checked out Virtua Racer here on the 32X. Let's go ahead and... I don't know if it would be considered an upgrade because the arcade game came out before this version, but the arcade game's going to have better graphics. So what do we say? Is this an upgrade? Maybe it's a lateral step. I don't know. Let's switch to the arcade game now. And we are back with an upgraded Virtua Racer. Sort of upgraded because this is the arcade version. Let's go ahead and hop in here. So we have three of the tracks we've seen already. Big Forest, Bay Bridge, and Acropolis. Let's just go ahead and give each of these a quick shot. I have a feeling that uh, we're not going to last very long. So... Um, you know, makes sense to me. Might as well try them all. We're here to try things, guys. You can see our pit crew got a significant upgrade. They look more like humans than they ever did before. They used to look like weird little block people. I do kind of like how in the first race here, you do start in the pit and the pit crew puts you together. It is a shame that in the other races, they kind of don't have those guys because it's kind of a cool addition. They made little blocky people. Now, this version obviously looks um, a fair amount better. Um, I'm not going to make too big a deal out of it because, I mean, obviously it's going to look better. It's the arcade version. And, you know, again, by today's standards, it's like nothing nothing to write home about. You know, as if anyone still writes home. Like, dear mother, I was in an arcade and I witnessed a marvel of modern technology. It is called virtual reality. And I believe polygons will be the, you know, way of the future. I'm going, this joke's going on way too long. The amusement park got an upgrade. I'm all over the road here. The physics got a tad harder. It's like they simplified them for the home uh, console or something like that. The flags are actually, the flags that are waving. That's pretty cool. Uh, we definitely are going to have a hard time placing, though, in, uh, in, in this version here. I feel like I know how to break, though. But now I don't know how to change my camera angle. I don't want to fiddle around with it too much because I know that it'll make me lose. So maybe maybe we'll just say we've seen what it looks like when people are ants. And we don't need to see it again. Or maybe I'll try between the races. Maybe I'll try and figure it out. It would be cool to zoom in and out with the camera angle just to see. Oh, oh, whoa, oh, I'm doing a little better here. I'm eighth. I'm eighth of 16th. This can't be so. Is it that Gaming J actually has a bit of racing ability? Oh my god, we're on the second lap. If we can complete a third lap, we will have... Well, we will have done par for Mick. It's really that fourth lap that's, uh, you know, impressive. There's a bit of drift going on here. Far more than I experienced in the home console edition, which is pretty fun. Oh! But the wipeouts are just as awesome. And yeah, that cost me a place. I, I deserve to lose... Wow, only one spot. That's something. This almost feels like the arcade version is quite a bit easier, which usually in my experience, it's the case that the arcade versions are the harder versions of things because they don't want you playing as long. In the home console version, they can make it easier to let you play. That guy gave me a little boost, but they ended up wiping me out. I kind of want to go to that carnival. It looks pretty fun. I wish somebody would make a modern game called Virtual World. And in Virtual World, some people get careers as virtual racers, some people get in fights, some people are cops. Basically, I kind of want to explore this world and find out what else is there. Somebody's manning that amusement park and somebody's going to it. I wouldn't mind, maybe you could make this like an Oculus Rift game. Any would-be indie developers out there, 
Give me Virtual World. I want to return to the Virtual World of Sega that Sega made in the 80s and know what's been going on. I want to see all the polygon greatness that exists. I mean, graphics-wise, you could save a lot of money because you wouldn't have to produce very much. Well, I mean, it's... I shouldn't, I shouldn't knock you because it's still quite a bit of work. They sang Game Over to us. I like how there's bikini babes there with umbrellas. Sweet polygon bikini babes. Oh, and time has now frozen. Interesting. Okay, so there are colored buttons, and these change your VR mode. So I'm excited to see this. And we're going to try it in the Bay Bridge. If I can keep it zoomed in there, yes. Bay Bridge, here we come, baby. I'm ready. Let's do it. Out of my way, birds. Okay, switch our views. All right, this is the first person view. We even got our sweet polygon arms in the mix. This is what it feels like to be a man made of polygons. Oh, God. Just as difficult to uh, race as it was in the home version from this view. So let's get out of this view. Yes, we are ants. The power of ants. Again, easiest way to race. Look at, look at our field of view. We can see everything that's coming up. I mean, if I were a good racer, this would significantly help me. It obviously doesn't help me because knowing what, what's coming up is not my problem when it comes to racing. It's more the whole doing the racing that's my problem. Can we go? Oh, we knocked like coconuts out of that tree. Can we go over the ledge here? No, it doesn't let us. That's a shame. Oh, it like rewound us back to the track. That's weird. So we live in a land of polygon people where time can freeze and can also be reversed. It's kind of like Braid meets Virtua. So Virtua Braid, there's another game you could make. So yes, I would love to return to the land of Virtua somehow. Somebody make it happen. Somebody out there has the power to do so. Make it happen. This is just like average, and this is closer. Let's go with average here. This one seems okay. Oh, with the freaking trees. <laughs> Jesus. Those are like hard wipeouts. It's not like he kind of bounces off the wall. It's like the whole car spins around. He vomits his lunch in his helmet all over himself. No wonder he can't race. Well, he can't even see. That helmet is just full of blood from all the concussive head smacks on the, the steering wheel. <laughs> this is, that's the grossest thing I think I've ever said on a stream. Uh, let's not dwell on it too much. So did you guys have a 32X? Um, I didn't know anyone who had a 32X. I didn't know anyone who had a Sega CD. I don't even think I knew anyone who had a Neo Geo. Like, my life was really boring as a kid. Everyone had a Nintendo, a Super Nintendo. Some people had Sega Genesis, the plural of Sega Genesis, I assume. And that was about it. Like, there were a few other... I, I think maybe one kid had a TurboGrafx-16. And it always seemed like this awesome, like, mystical machine that came from Japan. <laughs> I love that they sing Game Over Hilarious Alright, well we got one more one more track to try But anyway, did you guys have a, a 3DX Or Sega CD or Turbo Graphics? I don't know, or Neo Geo Those are all kind of like cool systems in my mind uh, As a kid, again I thought they were so cool, but like nobody knew Had these things Oh, oh, I got a kiss Yes I got a kiss. The power of love is going to drive me home on this one. Who knew? I was dating one of those girls. Oh, awesome. Now I really want to... I really need to come to the land of Virtua now. Things are getting X-rated. Or R-rated at the least. Although I guess, you know, a kiss from a girl in a bikini. Like, that's not even PG. Or is it? Would it count? Would, would that be G or PG? I guess PG because a bikini. It's a little racy. A little racy. In a racing game, guys, get it? Um, I'll stop now. I, I don't want to lose subscribers, so I really should. I really need to mind my P's and Q's with the horrible jokes because uh, it might drive people away. Oh man, I wonder what you guys actually think when you're listening to me just randomly babble. You know, I mean, I'm just a dude sitting in a room playing video games, talking to myself. I like to pretend that there's other people here. Because I know in the future other people will watch this video and they'll kind of be here with me. But at the time, literally there's no one here. It's just me. So I, I'm the definition of a crazy person, I think. Um, I mean, there's probably other things that make me crazy. Like the fact that I'm trying to play through the Thousand One Games Just Play Before You Die book. 
that's a long challenge, my friends. A long challenge. As you no doubt have been able to tell if you followed my channel. You know, we're on video 200 and whatever. And how many more have we got to go? Only like 700 and something games. That's only taken about two years and a bit. We got, we got tons of time. <laughs> it is kind of a ridiculous challenge when you think about it. I don't know. Um, I feel dedicated, though. I, I, I definitely, I say this all the time whenever I think about how many more games are to play, but I feel like I can do it. Um, and then it's, I don't know. Just something I have fun doing. So anyway, hopefully you have fun watching me. Hopefully you, you enjoy these insane babblings of mine. Um, CP, oh, checkpoint. I was going to say, let's speculate as to what that stands for, but I guess that's a riddle that solves itself. So I feel like we're doing okay in this race. It's a really bouncy camera at these parts, though. Really bouncy mountain cam view here. And we're still in lap two. Okay, this is it. We're on lap three. We have to get through this one and one more. And that's just like a personal goal for us. Our guy, he has the power of love driving us, but he has the power of his own racing ability driving the car. And so that is not going to get him very far. Love, love gives you the motivation, but at some level you need a bit of raw skill to be able to actually, you know, race a car. Um, no one can race purely on love. That's... That's, I think, uh, the motto of NASCAR. Nobody can race purely on love. Oh, we stayed on the road. That's a goal. This is baby steps, guys. Baby steps. Wow, even these cars go up to 320. Maybe those prototype cars in the 3DX version weren't that impressive. Because the Formula One car is really rocking it as far as speed's concerned. I have no idea why fire comes out of the rear of my car. I think that's a sign that I need to get my oil changed. If anything. Okay, we're on to the fourth lap. If we can not run out of gas, then it's like a new record. And we're doing it on the harder track. I can't I can't get onto lap four in Big Forest. And Big Forest is one big loop. There's literally nothing to it. I kind of feel like maybe I should try and redeem myself and try Big Forest one more time. Oh, we just barely got into that checkpoint. I don't know, what do you guys think? Should we try Big Forest one more time as like a victory lap? Uh, uh, in a racing game? Um, that's a terrible joke, I know, because it's literally barely even a joke. Um, okay, we, we timed out. We made it to three laps. I, I, we're going to do one more. We got sixth. They sang game over to us. Okay, here we go, guys. We got one more race in us. This is where we redeem ourselves. So our girlfriend has left us. So ashamed of the last race was she... But she can't bear to be seen with me. It's not that she doesn't love me. It's that she can't stand the shame of it. And so I've come out of retirement. I'm old. I'm inexperienced. I've never finished a race in my life. I'm this old, washed-up racer. But for the love of a woman, I will come out of retirement and redeem myself. Meanwhile, the young upstart racer, who doesn't want competition from a golden age racer, he's been threatening me all throughout my my entire comeback and he says if i beat him here there's gonna be hell to pay and i just tell them write me a check because i'll pay hell if you know what i mean if you're, if you're tracking this metaphor but he didn't get the joke but that's okay so now we don't have the love of a woman now we're trying to fight for it i feel like this is going to motivate us more you know it's like that old saying like um, who runs faster, the rabbit or the wolf? And it's the rabbit, because if the rabbit fails, the rabbit's dinner. If the wolf fails, eh, he's still hungry. That's okay. He'll just go eat something else. But if the rabbit fails, he's dinner. So when we're trying to get love, we're the rabbit. When we had it, we were the wolf. Didn't matter if we passed the race or not. We we're going to go home, that smoking hot, polygon-shaped woman with uh, <laughs> polygon bits in all the right places. <laughs> Oh man, I seriously, I'm such a sucker for like retro graphics. Seeing these like polygon forests, I am literally like, the forest looks amazing. I want to go explore the forest. Forget about racing. I want to go to that theme park, damn it. It's a theme park in a forest. It's like, I don't know. It seems like something out of a storybook, and the polygon graphics just make it seem more magical to me. Um, it's like, what are there going to be bears on the rides and stuff? And could you find like a magical cave with like a cool crystal and. A secret sword while you're at a theme park? That's a game that needs to exist. It's called Theme Park Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know. Whoa, no! 
Okay, we haven't had a catastrophic fail yet. And we're in fifth, oh my god. Dear god. If we, if we could actually place, if we could get within the first one, two, or three, that would, again, be an accomplishment, I think. And we're fourth, so it's definitely doable. And there's the first and the second, or no, second and third place guy, I think. You jerk. Out of my way. Oh man, if we, if we actually, if it looks like we might actually beat this thing, we gotta go into ant mode. We're passing the finish line in ant mode. Cause that's sort of like the, the camera zooms back and the movie ends and you know that the hero's made it. He's got the girl. Oh, look at these suckers. Wait, three of them? How many guys are ahead of me? I thought it was fourth. Oh, what are these like people who are dead last? This was me in the previous races. These guys are like 16th, 15th, and 14th. Oh no, that guy had a place, I think. I think we just stole it. Oh, stay on the road. No, we're battling it out to place. That's okay. As long as, I mean, a victory for me is literally just finishing the race. That's a victory for an old retired fogey like me. Can't believe we can't beat this guy though. Sucker. Okay, this guy up here, is he in second? Man, we're on the fifth lap. I knew I had it in me, guys. I knew I had it in me. It was with your, with your faith. With your, with your non-stop enthusiasm and support, I'm going to finish a race. <laughs> it's like kind of the saddest achievement ever. I'm going to finish one race on the easiest level. We did it. We're heroes. <laughs> oh, I thought that was the finish line. Oh, shoot. Stay on the road. Don't get cocky, Jay. Don't get cocky. There's the uh, theme park of magic and dreams. One day I will go there. One day I'm gonna, you know what, that's what I'm gonna do. Oh, ant mode. No, ant mode, yes! We did it! Goal! It's like, it's like soccer. We scored a goal! All we had to do was race 16 other racers on five laps. They still say game over to us though. Well, I'm gonna say that's a success. I'm gonna say we got our girl back. Your ranking is first. Damn straight it is. Oh man, this is tricky though. Jay. Boom. We got it. Congratulations, Jay. You at number one. Oh, sweet. 326. We blew four minutes out of the water. We're the best. Guys, this has been Virtual Racer. This is a game in the book, 1001 Video Games You Must Play Before You Die. And I will say that, you know, this is a, an influential 3D game. It doesn't hold up as well in terms of the graphics sort of being uh, cutting edge, obviously, because that was a big thing about this game when it came out. But I will say it has tons of oh, a seizure of VR. It has tons of uh, <laughs> retro appeal to it. It has gorgeous polygon style graphics that, although they look sort of quote unquote bad today, there's such charm to them. I don't know if I would say that this is a must play. Uh, in my opinion, because, you know, there's only a few tracks. The physics are fine, but it's it's just sort of a racer. But for the time when this came out, again, this was a big deal. And I think it's still a big part of gaming history. So um, is this a game you must play before you die? My opinion, not really. But is this a game that definitely has had a bit, big impact on, um, you know, games generally? I think, yeah. Um, games like this and Virtua Fighter and all the other early Polygon games really helped pave the way for... 3D to become so common that now we take it for granted. Um, so a uh, tip of the cap to you today, Virtual Racer. Um, and uh, that's my opinion. What do you guys think? Do you agree with my assessment here? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, whether you've enjoyed the game, hopefully you've enjoyed hanging out with me. Uh, and if you have, go ahead, like the video, subscribe to the channel. And as well, if you guys have been liking these videos, please feel free to share them. Um, when you guys share videos, it really helps me. It helps me find new people. You can share them with your friends or just anyone who you think might be interested. Um, I ask for this occasionally, but you know, sharing really helps me out a ton. So if any of you have it in your heart to sort of be a champion of Gaming J and, and let other people know that I exist, I really, really, really do appreciate it. So thanks, guys. And until next time, take care of yourselves. All right. Peace. Yeah.